Um, I'm delighted uh, now to have the opportunity to introduce Monica uh, Likama to you. Uh, she's CEO and chair at Enfuse. Uh, they're a leading payments innovator. They're based here in Helsinki. And Monica is personally very inspired to make a difference. And she's going to talk today about some of the ways that she and her team are building APIs and ultimately enabling customers to make environmentally responsible purchasing decisions. So over to you, Monica. Thank you. And Thank you, Claire, and, and hope you can hear me well. So it's not just me thinking. So I'll I'll assume that you can and then continue. So hi, my name is Monica Likama, and I'm here to tell a little bit about how we can save the planet through impactful APIs. And I know that it's quite a heavy title, but in the end of the game, everyone needs to do something to save the planet. And uh, I have the good fortune of having been part of founding a company where we really can see that we can have an impact, which every one of us can have. And I will go into a bit into more detail on that going forward. And, and thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure and an honor to be speaking and hope all the tech, tech stuff works as well. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the world looked, looks today. Of course, many of us know it, but do we really re recognize it? That's one challenge in order to make change you need to understand what the baseline is uh, also talk a little bit about why do we need to change in order to save the planet i think that's also uh, important so i often talk a lot about start with why how can we reduce our carbon footprint and why does it matter and of course how can apis be part of help to save the planet and uh, as Enfuse, we have built uh, our uh, services around this concept and also packaged it in a understandable way, which is called My Carbon Action. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what that is and how it works. So a little bit about Enfuse to give an understanding. I'm, I'm an old banker myself. I used to be a developer in the past millennium. And uh, when I hit 40, I had the existential crisis, four kids, house loan, etc., and looking into what could I do to have a purpose. So purpose driven, uh, building complex, big things. It's, it's a part of who I am as a person. And uh, back in 2016, uh, I was confronted with the possibility of being part of building a neobank. But I thought that actually I'm not fit for one place. So then I realized that what can I do to take the knowledge I have and to make something good out of it? And that's when uh, what became Enfuse was born. So I contacted uh, my former colleagues and to be co-founders. And uh, we had this discussion about how could we bring something to the payment world where we are born and been living for our uh, adult lives? How could we make things better? faster and globally scalable and actually do things that matter and that's how in uh, Enfuse was founded so by enabling and infusing knowledge we then became Enfuse and uh, we started off by uh, uh, enabling as the first one in the world card payment processing in a public cloud we chose AWS for many reasons but definitely because payments data are very regulated and in that sense, uh, being compliant, adhered to payment card industry, data security standards, third party penetration tests, etc. It's basic stuff to have things up and running. And of course, running in a public cloud, uh, the ways to scale globally and of course in volume wise was a good fit for our purposes. Also, as bankers, we've been living the PSD2, so the Payment Service Directive that came into force in 2007. And then the next part, which is the Payment uh, Service Directive uh, 2. And I know that on the API days, been a lot of discussions all are also around open banking. At Enfuse, we see this just as a stepping stone towards the open business, open data world. And that's also where APIs come to play. So having really good APIs, with strong security, consent management are vital. 
And when we were sitting one one afternoon at the airport, me and my co-founder thinking about like, okay, we done this awesome thing. We have done records in, uh, you know, launching new services, etc. We we are the first one in the world running public cloud. But so what? If we think about the values of the company, we start sustainability, collaboration, think big and excellence. How can we really find something that that makes sense? And back in 2018, we then uh, were looking into this uh, sustainability aspect and really thought that what can we do? Well, we store payment data, which is really important for us as people, and we are allowed to store and process sensitive data. And by combining these two, what do we actually get? Where we actually see what we consume. So we have the facts of consumption. And if we take that, what can we derive from that data? It's actually what we emit. And that's when My Carbon Action, uh, the concept of it was launched. There are a lot of good initiatives out there. We have All on the Index, we have the Economy, we have Greenly, Meniga came out with something. And I'm really happy that we can see a lot of efforts that really are here to enable us, consumers and businesses, to live a more sustainable life and talk a little bit more about why does that matter. So uh, My Carbon Action, it's a purchase-based uh, purchase uh, service for consumers, uh, the first version. And then we have also been working now on a B2B sector when the whole idea is about increasing awareness of the everyday climate impact of the consumption choices that we make. So what we buy and what we pay. And as a former uh, developer uh, back in 1997, when I was studying human computer interaction, we were thinking a lot and, and, and talking about that the human brain uh, uh, can only take in seven pieces of information at once. And the good thing with uh, our tool is that we have put it into certain domains that are the most biggest one that emits. And if we look at what happens in the world, 70% uh, of the greenhouse gas emissions are derived from what we consume. And if we think about, but so what? Does it really matter? Greenhouse gas, who cares? Well, of course, it's a big problem because if we, if we look at the climate change and we look at it, we are talking about the Paris Agreement where we want to stay below 1.4 degrees of uh, rising in the climate. What actually happens if we don't keep to that? Well. If we look back uh, where it was the previous ice age, the, the climate was about six degrees lower than it is today. And if we go back to the, to, the, to the decade of the dinosaurs, where it was approximately four degrees warmer than it is today, we could actually have crocodiles above the Arctic Circle. And I'm from the north part. We are used to reindeers, not maybe having the crocodiles. So of course, uh, jokes aside, it's a big change that we are going through and we need to do something to change it. And uh, the greenhouse gases has exploded in the industrial era. So if we look at 1850s up until today, it is really growing. And also we, what we can expect are uh, an inflood of refugees also due to the climate change. So I think it's in everyone's interest. And, and the good thing and the bad thing is that this is a big problem and it affects us all, the whole planet. So how can we make a change? I know that consumers really easily say, that, okay, you know, it's not us, it's the other ones. I can't impact, I'm just a small human being. But that's not true. As I said, 70% of the CO2 emissions are derived for us consumers. And if we take an average fin, an average fin emits about 10.4 tons of CO2 emissions a year. And by 2030, we need to go down with over 70%. And if we look then at what are the things that we actually do that causes a lot of emissions, then it's about what we eat, how we live, and, and how we get about. So travel, if it's the car, etc. So those are really big things that do em emit. And then if we look at the whole world, of course, us, first world countries, the countries that are above and beyond, who are doing a lot with tech, etc. We do use a lot of electricity. 
We, we use electricity for, for cooling, for heating, etc. We are the ones that do a lot of emissions. But also seeing that the living standards globally are, are going up, uh, it will also, of course, uh, make all the emissions higher. So it's not about just reducing. We also need to start gathering CO2 emissions because, unfortunately, the problem with the greenhouse gases, many of them actually stay in the atmosphere for over 10,000 years. So it's not like a short pro term problem. It's a, it's a long term problem. So when we were looking at this and then we were looking, OK, here is something that we can really influence. What can we do with our services and with APIs and with the concept of us believing in the open data world? We started building what now is called My Carbon Action. And it's a tool that really helps us as consumers uh, enable change in our lifestyle. So what it does is that it calculates my individual carbon footprint. So I do a test where I insert how I live, what I eat, etc. And then I get a baseline because in the end of the day, it's also hard to change if you don't know if it's good or bad. Is 675 kilograms, is it a lot or not? And, and those are the things so that you can really understand the impact of every purchase. And those are then put into these six different categories, so it is easy for us to understand where to do the changes. And then we have, we have also added uh, 100 plus personalized tips on buying behavioral changes. So, for example, if I say that I'm a meat lover, uh, then I can be recommended to go vegan for a week and understand the impact that would have. If I'm I'm living in a big house and I have the possibility to change heating uh, so, uh, vendor, that will have an impact. And of course, uh, there are a lot of other things. What I buy and how I consume are important. And if we think about COVID, uh, many people uh, think that, oh, but it has reduced the CO2 emissions and, and it's actually been good. Unfortunately, it's only reduced about approximately 5%. So it's still a big way to go. And if we think about all the challenges about how many deaths we have had, we can really see that climate change is a bigger problem than COVID ever will be, even though COVID isn't over. And we will have these recurring pandemics going forward because of many problems. Uh, coming with higher temperatures, also malaria, mosquitoes, etc. So in the end of the day, we can do changes uh, related to how we consume and how we behave uh, with the help of data and APIs. That's the good thing with going to the digital world and really seeing who we are as consumers, where we buy, what we buy, and what we buy is the things that gets produced. So when we change our consumption behavior, we can really see an impact on what will be produced. We can also highlight near produced uh, goods and services. Uh, we have also incorporated in our data model country specific data sets because there, is, there are huge differences in how, for example, e electricity is produced. In France, there's a lot of nuclear power energy and then in Germany, coal. So there are differences and, and those matter. So we can see that it doesn't matter as much if you're male or female, but it's about where you live, the culture and habits. And to understand those and the country that you are residing in, those play part in what you actually emit. So when we started building uh, our service, and if we think about the fact that Payment processing is the, the core of Benfuse. That's what we started off with to enable issuance of money in different formats. Uh, we do Apple Pay, Google Pay, credit card, debit card, etc. So taking that data and the processing capabilities and actually putting our so-called My Carbon uh, Action Engine on top of it, where we can get data in through various APIs, we can make sure that uh, the data is through consumers or businesses granted through consent. And of course, us being supervised by the Finnish Financial Supervisory Authority and being PCI DSS compliant is a big part of what we do and how we can globally service this uh, uh, to different players. 
currently we are focusing on enabling banks, uh, financial institutions and merchants to add this tool to their capabilities because we want to be there where it's convenient for us as consumers to use and then it has to be there where the money flows are and that's why we chose to put it like this and uh, we can really see that uh, the good thing is that the world is going more and more towards making different kind of solutions happen when it comes to fight the climate change. Uh, here I have some, some just short uh, examples. So uh, for example, the, the, the difference in, in uh, eating meat versus vegan food uh, is, is one big thing. And if we look at the meat production, dairy products, etc., there we can see that there are things that can be uh, done. I love a good steak, uh, so uh, I, I do eat both, but it's about how much we can improve and what are the things that we can do to make a change. Also, how we travel. Of course, now I've been working remotely more or less for, for a year. Do miss seeing people, so, so sometimes that would be nice, but also understanding that uh, taking a car, what kind of car, do I need to go? How do I need to travel? Uh, at least in our business, where it's about payments, we can see a big transition happening now when, when people are actually working more and more remote. Also incumbents and old school players are, are starting to embrace the new world. So that's a good thing also coming out of, out of this. Uh, that's in short. Uh, what I, I had, so uh, I'm more than happy to take any questions. So let me see if I'll stop sharing so I can see you as well. But Claire, that's what I had. So t picking up a bit speed on the no, well, timeline. Thank no, thank you so much for um, sharing some of the background and, and putting uh, you know, this broader context of, uh, you know, who we are as humans and uh, uh, and thinking deeply, I, I guess, about your uh, almost indirect customers that you're supporting. Um, you you talked early about early on about open business, open data um, as, uh, um, you know, this the sort of the next big kind of um, step on for you. Uh, um, how how are you talking with your direct customers today about what this means for them? Yes, I, I think it really helps our customers and us as customers of our customers, I mean consumers or businesses, to have better control of our data. So open banking isn't just about account aggregation and using data for various purposes like scoring capabilities. But when you add on the open government, when you get the tax, like we are talking with the tax authorities, how can we make an SME's life as easy as possible, both from what you buy, what services you consume in order to produce your own services? That's important. And we can really see when we get that in play, uh, it will bring huge uh, capabilities for different kind of ecosystems. I do think the biggest challenge currency currently is about the identity management. So me coming from a physical world into the digital world, and when we talk about data and money, we also talk about fraud and, and uh, different kind of uh, cr criminal activity. So it's really important that how do we get that in play? And I do believe that all the tools and tech is there. It's about building good user flows and understanding how things actually work. So it's an in infrastructure uh, thing mostly. No, thank you. Um, and uh, uh, you talked about. Sorry, I'm just getting to some of the the, yeah. the other questions about. Um, uh, you know, in terms of your your uh, customer connection. Um, how how are you finding that uh, your you know what's been the take up of the, um, the the app and so on that you've had to date and what some of the feedback that you're getting? Yes, uh, we have actually seen that uh, thirty seven percent uh, thinks it's it's useful and and actually seven percent by evidence has changed. So it's been in use quite a short time. 
uh, I think the pandemic came and many banks, you know, and like businesses in general pulled like the handbrake and, and panic button. But uh, when it's been now in production for some time, we can really see that it's it's gotten a lot of positive feedback on the convenience, the easy to use, and also that you can see the change. So then it's actually more up to our customers who, who own the user interface, because we are through the APIs, you can start building in gamification features. You know, we could clear be competing, like let's let's do a vegan week, let's see how, how it goes. And and get loyalty points. There are a lot of things that can be utilized, but I think our job is to enable the data, the insight in a secure manner. And then it's our customers who will guide their customers, aka us consumers, to actually make a change. Because at least I know myself, I am really concerned. I want to change. But I believe that, uh, you know, I need easy tools. I'm I'm lazy, you know. It's still, I've been doing the things I've been doing for 40 years to change. It, it's a it's a hassle. But if I then look at the fact that how the climate change will be like in 30 to 50 years, and I just said that for 40 years I've been doing something in a certain way, I understand that if I thought like three years ago that climate change is a maybe problem for my great grandchildren, it's wrong. I might be even alive, hopefully, to have those challenges, but definitely my kids. So it's time to stop the BS and actually start the actions. Yeah. And, you know, your point about the um, the real-time feedback actually changing behaviour. I mean, I remember when you know, people used to get a bank balance once a month and they didn't necessarily yes. think about um, you know, inquiring what their bank balance was between, um, you know, statements arriving in the post. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's online on a map, and you can on an app, and you check it multiple times a day, um, without necessarily, you know, without sort of thinking about it. So, um, you know, and that changes a lot of your behaviour because you get this, you know, this instinctive response. So, um, yeah. And I, I was just thinking because what we're doing, and to everyone listening here. Uh, we're going to push out soon our sandbox and APIs to a bigger audience. So if you're sitting there and thinking, oh, how could I enrich enrich this? Maybe like I have this awesome uh, tool with APIs to give out recipes for vegans because I would love to eat uh, vegan food more, but I suck at making it. And I would really like to just have good recipes and, you know, order it somewhere and they would come. Uh, so if you can add these small things, so that's the ecosystem comes built up of. And then I think those are not, then, you know, transporting goods. That's also emitting quite a lot. So again, if you drive a truck uh, with diesel and you take it into some electricity or whatever, it again pushes down the emissions. And there are small steps, but like if we all do small steps, it actually amounts to a bigger change and, and i think so please if you have any ideas just uh, dm me or send at monica at infuse.com i'd be more than happy to have a discussion great we're about to start the panel but i just have one quick question in the chat from yes. philippe um who is asking where where you can get access to the my carbon app um and use it um yeah so it will we, yeah so so it will yeah. come shortly uh on our own infuse.com sandbox uh, currently, it's available, for example, through Rabobank in the Netherlands. So uh, that's uh, something where we're working to, to get out. And if you want to have just...